besties and blanketeers. <sighs> Happy Friday. I didn't even know how to start. I'm Betty McNitt <laughs> and today, like every day, we're working on the six day kit blanket. Um, so today we've been swatching, right? We've been swatching for the six day challenge coming up the last week in January. And so let's see, I have, I have my swatches here. The first day we did the regular Hi Linda uh, Vivid Chevrons. That's the original pattern. And then of course, next had to be the snowflake effect everyone's favorite right everyone loves the snowflake effect except me i like vivid chevrons <laughs> and then today we're going to hey alba we're going to do the what what we call in the group the half snowflake effect so it's a half a snowflake because you get the little bit of texture on the bottom but not the top. So it doesn't have quite as much texture as the snowflake effect that has, you know, really pops these textured stitches um, and gives you a more lacy, lacy look. The half snowflake effect is, I think, popular because you, excuse me, you change colors or the pattern repeat repeats change so it's it's just less complicated you know um, and there are a little, there are several viral photos of the six day kit blanket out there and this is the what they are usually they're of the half snowflake effect okay so this is this is a very popular effect However, there's a problem with it, okay? If you are going to change colors along with the pattern repeat, you end up at the top ending your blanket on row seven. Just really supposed to end on row four. And um, oh, I don't have one. But the, the reason for that is because the double crochet stitches go like that. And then the the um, the decreases of the of the granny rows bring it back in. Lots of people have made this blanket with that, and they they don't have any problem with it. They don't see any issue. They they're fine ending their blanket on row seven instead of row four. Okay, but if you want to end on row four, what happens is you end up with half a stripe. So that's where people get like. Uh oh, they'll start their half snowflake effect and then they'll get about two thirds of the way done and they'll they'll go, uh oh, I'm going to have a half a stripe at the end. What do I do? So you have to plan ahead for this. And this, I, I'll show you what I do because you can see my, my bottom and my top pretty much match. This is a little bit bigger, but they match it's balanced and then these are my stripes in between so I will explain to you what I did and then I'm going to I'm gonna do it for you without the squaring off I think that my way hey Katie Katie always says hi 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 three times so we know that's Katie even though it says Facebook user uh, <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about squaring off. I think this works best. This looks best if you square off. That's why this swatch is from the 60 baby blanket pattern. So that's why I squared this one off 
And I also wanted to put that cool half double crochet edge in the camel stitch edge on it where you see in the pictures it looks like she's doing four rows at a time but she's really not and someday I'll do a video about that how she did it but um, if you want to make that cool I just thought for me that edge would look better squared off on a squared off blanket and I also wanted to even out those stripes at the top and bottom so this works best if you square off or start square when I wrote the baby blanket pattern I didn't have this straight start right I didn't know how to do that yet so I um, you can even see on this one it's squared off after the fact but I mean that's totally cool you can square off after the fact it's no big deal but now we know how to start with a straight start so if you want to start straight you start with whatever color you're gonna you have to plan with whatever kind of color you're gonna do your edge you start with that and you go through the square squared off rows and then you begin row two with your new color and you change colors at every row two and then when you get to the top you change back to your edge color and you do row two skip row three and then do row four that way you can end on row four and then you can square off and then start your edge and do your edge in those same colors that's that's how you, that's how you um, adjust the half snowflake effect to have the same size stripe on top and bottom well, that's how I do it all right so I'm gonna make a swatch but I'm gonna show you what it would look like if we weren't squaring off how's that sound I have to write all this down for y'all and put it on the um, website okay these are these are my least favorite arm uh, compression because they're so they're so tight and I cut holes in them because I thought that would make it better for my thumb but look at that oh it hurts so much <laughs> I'm doing great I took a shower and everything <laughs> Okay, let's start this swatch, half snowflake effect swatch. Is anybody planning on making the half snowflake effect for the challenge? Next week I will do confetti, Aussie confetti, and popsicle. I'll do those next week. Am I forgetting anything? I could do Aussie confetti both ways two ways to do it okay so here we go oh someone was um, asking me in private messages today about this is 37 okay the swatch if you're not if you're starting regular 37 um, stitches okay if I if I'm squaring off I'm starting square okay I'm starting with this bottom row I start with 30 and then what happens is see here are increases and then you build up the stitches so that's how it can be 30 when it's straight and then 37 when it's up and down okay so when you're making your swatch if you're starting square the formula is I think it's 13 plus 4 and if you're not starting square it's 17 plus 3 um, the popsicle effect we made it in a hat it was thought up by Gina Robertson and she pops in and out of the group um, 
but someone just comment commented on her popsicle effect blanket um, not too long ago so it did come up in the discussion thread the um, hi Facebook user I'm going to answer this question and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to take this out before I start counting because I don't y'all know how <laughs> how I get even if I count it it still comes out wrong okay I see that this is called the half snowflake effect and I've seen talk of a snowflake effect they're not the same and I did say it at the beginning of the video this is snowflake okay you have the um, you have the granny rose kind of um, highlighted on the top and bottom and for half snowflake it's just the bottom and then the top is um, the, the top it changes on on row seven so for half snowflake you change between row seven and two and for snowflake you change between row two and three and we call it half because you get texture on one side and not the other half snowflake is the easiest I think to do because the color changes on the repeat okay so we're talking about how to plan your half snowflake effect blanket so that the top you have a top and bottom stripe that match so you would want to start your blanket with the color that you're planning on using on the edge on the first round of the border okay so here I go I gotta count out loud one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Woo! Okay. And then, by the way, I use streaming software to stream into all these different places at once. So if you're on Facebook, um, say who you are, because it just says Facebook user. I think those are people that watching in the group. And then other places I can see your name. Like I can say see uh, Stacy's name, but some people on Facebook, I can't see your name. So starting in the second chain from the hook, we single crochet across. Okay, so this is row one, and we only have one row one on the entire blanket. After, um, at the end, row seven is your new row one. So the, the blanket has a six row repeat. Hi Irma, hi Robin. Today is the last day for the winter crochet pattern bundle. If you wanted to, if you wanted my pocket shawls, the six day pocket shawl and the six day sideways pocket shawl, they, I sell, I sell both together for $8 on my site. You can get the whole bundle for $19. Today is the last day. She said she is not, it's gone after midnight tonight. Yeah, say hi if you're here.
Okay, so this is an important step that a lot of people miss um, on the half snowflake on their half snowflake effect blankets, and this is one way you end up with stripes of different sizes. After row one, which is equivalent to your row seven, so how do you um, high Harriet? Um, hi Kelly in South Africa while wow, we have people from everywhere tonight so to make the half snowflake effect you change between two seven and two so this is row one but on your repeat it's row seven so we have to change color right here for this to work okay so I'm gonna change to whatever my first stripe is and then however many stripes you're gonna do you want to plan it so that it goes, you know, yellow, orange, blue, yellow, orange, blue, yellow, orange, blue, yellow is going to be the your last couple of rows, okay? So you have to you have to kind of plan it out. South Australia. Wow, we have South Africa and South Australia. Wow. We got Aussies in the house tonight. It's already Saturday for you guys. You're already on the weekend, right? It's still Friday night here. Um, okay, so here's how I change colors. I pull the um, new color through the last two loops of the last stitch of the ro previous row where I want the new color. Then I take my, oh my goodness, my hands today. See, these, these affect my hands. Um, my hand coordination. So I take the two ends, these are my two tails, okay, and I flip them up over my new working yarn and I hold that to the back and then I start my chain and that locks those tails in place so they're not floating around and causing a problem. And then I the pattern says to chain three to turn, but I chain four because my edges curl. One, two, three, skip three, three double crochet in the next stitch. So I did I did three different swatches this week, so you all can um, you all can be swatching and getting ready for the challenge. Next week I'll swatch the other two effects and I'll um, talk a little bit about yardage and and we'll plan like the next do the next step of your um, whoops of your plan my yarn fell on the floor okay skip two three 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 in the top of the mountain having brecky. <laughs> Man, I love Australians. I want to come visit y'all. Once we can travel again. Can't wait. Okay, and then skip to... Whoops. I might have to take these sleeves off. And now um, you're going to skip two, DC three together, all in one stitch. One, two, three. So you complete the first half of a double crochet three times. And then you pull through all four loops. Okay, now you have to skip four. Skip four means you skip over the um, you skip over four stitches and you stitch into the fifth one from where you are it doesn't mean you work into the fourth one it means skip four one two three four and then 
work into the fifth one. Hang on. My phone just picked up my earbuds. Can y'all hear me okay? To turn my Bluetooth off. Let me know if you can hear me. Um, okay. And we have a question, and the question is, why don't you crochet over the ends from Kathy? Why don't you crochet over the ends when you change color? Well, for one thing, I have skips right here. So there's nothing to crochet over. And the other reason is because I found out the hard way that that comes undone. I mean, I had an entire project where I crocheted over the ends because I read that you could just crochet over your ends to secure them. And when I washed it, it all came out. It all came undone. I had a big ball of yarn all that time. So I know we all love a good shortcut and nobody hates weaving in ends more than I do. I mean, really. I, I, I would be surprised if anyone hated it more than me. But um, and people give me suggestions all the time. Um, I've, tr I've tried a lot of different ways and just for me, I have found that there it's just not worth saving time. What works best for me and for my work is to just good old fashioned weave in the ends. So on the side of this blanket, what I'll do is I will, I'll do the edge row first and I'll send that thread that way and I'll send that thread that way and I'll work over them for like one or two stitches, probably just one and leave it hanging out and then I'll go back and I'll weave it into the edge or I'll weave it back up into this part where it matches so that way it doesn't show. Thank you, this is a I did not tie it together. I just, I'll show you again when I change colors again, how I flip the ends up over the working yarn before I start um, my chain, my turning chain, and it just locks them in place. I, I mean, you can never, you can't say never, I don't never tie a knot, but I save knots for emergencies. If I can avoid it, I will not tie a knot. And there is no way I am tying any kind of knot that, and then trimming the ends right next to the knot. And I know I've heard so many people say, I've never had one come undone. Um, and all it takes is, would be one, you know, one coming undone. I guess because I had that really bad experience with my ends coming out and I have I have blankets here from my mom and you know that my mom has made and blankets that I have made that have been through the wash multiple times and sometimes you'll get a little tail peeking out and I just trim them off but I've never had anything come apart when I've you know just woven in the tails. When I run out of a ball and I add a new ball of yarn, um, I, I do it the same way. I pull the new thread through the old thread and tuck the tails up over and keep going. And then I weave it in. I'll weave one tail one way and one tail the other way. Oh, 
Um, yes, you thread it back in. Um, that's really brave to admit, Annie. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, if, if you're still here on the end of the call, I'll show you what I do. I'll weave, I'll weave in this one on the bottom and show you how I do it. Okay. Row three. One, two, three, four. The pattern says chain three. I have to chain four because my edges curl. You should do a swatch with the pattern as written first and then and see what happens for you and then try one of my many tips and tricks to um, deal with curling edges. One of them is to chain four instead of three. I also have been Somebody's saying they can't hear me now? What happened? Did I cut out? Am I too low? Let me move this. Did I freeze? I think maybe the feed froze. Oh goodness. tap on the video. Yeah. You might want to check your device, my dear, because other people are saying they can hear me. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Michigan. Wow, people from um, all over. Oh, Florida. I love Florida. There you go. Okay. Do you need to do something special for what? Tap on the video, check on your device, check to make sure you don't have your device silenced. Usually I go through and say everything I'm doing, but I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> Somebody said they liked my hook. This is a Furl's Odyssey. Maybe if one of the mods is watching, you can drop my um, drop my affiliate link in the comments. It's www.tinyurl.com forward slash Betty's furls. The Odyssey is my favorite hook. I only do affiliate stuff for things that I, you know, feel good. products that I like and companies that I feel good about. Hi, Mealy. I think they're worth the money. But I crochet every day and I crochet for my business, for my livelihood. Um, yeah, somebody could type that in the comments for me. I'm, I'm actually on, um, I, I'm on a streaming software, so I'd have to put my work down and, and go click around, click around, click around. And then who knows how distracted I would get. But someone could type it in. Thank you. All right, so now I'm on row four. Chain one. It's the single crochet row. 
common error on this row is to forget to skip the second stitch and the second to last stitch of the row. Hi Melbourne. And then I'll put it, I might have put it in, I might have put um, the furls link into the um, description of the video. I don't remember, I put a bunch of links in there. Hi Faye. Wow, we have so many people on tonight, so good to see everyone. It's Friday night. I took a shower and did my hair and got all dressed up to go live on Facebook. <laughs> Crochet! Thank you, Heather. That was Heather. What kind of yarn is everyone planning to use for the challenge? By the way, if you want to use these nurturing fibers and do one of my baby blankets, they have kits at Good Loops for these blankets. This yarn that I'm using is left over from the baby blanket pattern when I made that up. And I don't have the whole blanket to show you because I gave it to somebody. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then you you do three single crochet in the chain three space. I'm not I'm not doing a very good swatch along tonight, am I? Okay, and then the last stitch of the row, I work from the back to the front, and that is to alleviate um, curling on the edges again. Okay, and then I chain four to turn, even though the pattern says chain three. Okay, so double crochet, this is row five, you skip two, counting this one. One, two, and then you start on that third single crochet. So double crochet rows, you skip two at the beginning of the row. Three granny uh, cluster row. We call that those the granny rows. These two, row two and three, we call them the granny rows. You skip three, single crochet. You skip one, single one, double two, uh, granny three. Yes, I did two other swatch alongs this week. Okay, let me see. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight double crochet going up to the mountain. You know you're right if you land in the center, single crochet in the row below. So three in one in the top of the mountain. Yes, I did two other swatch alongs this week. They're both on, on my YouTube channel. They're also in the Six Day Kid Blanket Challenge event. They are in the Six Day Kid Blanket group. I believe they're on my Facebook page. You have lots of different places you can find the different ones I did this week. I did the original Vivid Chevron stripe, the defined stripes, we call it. And I did, um, two days ago, I did the snowflake effect. And today I'm doing the half snowflake effect. So. I'm not a big counter because I like to watch a movie while I'm crocheting. <laughs> and I just learned, I just enjoy my crochet more when I don't have to count, when I can memorize it. And I mean, let's face it, I'm Betty McNitt. I can do the six day kid blanket practically in my sleep at this point. So um, this is what I do. I have this little cheat where I know on every single six day kid blanket, even the star blankets when you come down the from the mountain into the valley the last double crochet always lands right between these two last two stitches of this granny cluster okay yes i'll be doing the confetti effect next week and the popsicle effect 
next week. Or maybe maybe over the week. I might do one over the weekend. I can't go live every every day. Well, I guess during the challenge I will, but I might have to um I might have to like not be on overhead every time because because of my legs. I have lipedema and I had surgery last year to remove it and for whatever reason sitting in a chair like this with my legs down it real it makes my legs swell so I got a new chair where it's one of those you're kind of half kneeling on and it's not as bad but it's still um you know I just I have to really have to take good care of my body so that's why I, I like doing these tutorials live with you all so I can engage and I just don't I don't really um, want to like sit here at this desk a lot and be editing and and all that kind of thing this is more fun okay one two three four five six seven and then three double crochet in the center single crochet at the top of the mountain Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I did see that question. Is there a specific weight of yarn that you like to use? I like, um, I actually really love doing a chunky throw. Y you can do one on, I think it's a hundred and a hundred and twenty one twenty one with chunky yarn and like a eight millimeter, 10 millimeter hook. I can fly through that. <laughs> I like that. Um, I also, I'm kind of a creature of habit. I like to do the lazy mix, um, which is wor a worsted weight yarn. And I always mix it the same way with the same rows. I do Vivid Chevron, that's my favorite. And I use one cake yarn, I use two different cake yarns and I, I do rows five and six with one of them and the rest of the rows with the other. And you can, that's called Betty's Lazy Mix. Cause I'm lazy cause I can just get it out and start it. I don't have to, <laughs> it's the same thing every time. And then I like doing the chunky three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight going down. So the sides of the, the sides of the rows are different then the um yeah i always work this last one from back to front okay let me get in that stitch the way it's tight see this is why my edges curl come on now this is like giving birth you know i have a lot of stash so um I, I just I like to burn through my stash this is another thing okay I'm, I'm making a mess out of this but this is another thing I do on my edges and I haven't added this to the pattern yet is on the last stitch of the row I I do on the last double crochet of the row I do an extended double crochet so to do that you pull through one loop first and then you pull through two and then you pull through two I do that just because my edges curl. You don't have to do your um, do your swatch the way the pattern's written and see if your edges curl. And if they do, you can do what I do and add a little bit more length on the sides. Okay, double crochet row, skip two. This row is the same. You don't have to go in through the back of the stitch if you don't want to. I do it because it keeps my edges flatter, gives me flat edges, but you don't have to. Try it first the regular way and see. This row is the same, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I didn't, I knew that was wrong. <sighs> I did too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep. Yeah, it still curls. Okay, so here, here's another thing that you can do. I chained four. Um, you can do an extended double crochet. So I had to go back to this stitch because I made a mistake. Extended double crochet. Pull through one, pull through two, pull through two. And just makes a little longer double crochet. Skip two. And then when you when you do your edge, when you work your edge around, and if you work into actually if you work into the sides in, into the stitches the way I do, or if you work into the spaces, you can still you can make adjustments and and um, you don't have to go into you know every single stitch. You can skip. If, the, if your edges are really long and, and make them lay flat. I'll show you my swatch in a minute, what I'm talking about. My um, The other one I had, I had out here. One, two, three, and then seven going down. I have one blanket that the edges curl really badly even though I put I just put a row of single crochet down each side but the edge will help um, but these are some things that you can do and there are some people their edges don't curl I don't know what they're doing differently but their edges don't curl Mine curl like crazy. And someone someone um, in the group came up with that idea of working from back to front and now I just do it automatically. Who's saying I'm lazy too? Who said that? Oh, thank you. Let me count because I did it wrong last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You should have eight double crochet and I gotta go from back to front into the chain it's gonna, there we go, that wasn't too bad. Whoop, and then extended double crochet. That's how I end the row, the double crochet row. Yeah, some people don't. Okay, this is a swatch along. We're doing the half, um, the half snowflake effect. So this is, um, well, let me just do row four and then I'll say what I was about to say. Row four, single crochet row, chain one, single crochet in the first stitch, skip one. Don't forget to skip one. And then you just single crochet straight across the row. So you get to the last two stitches and then you skip one and single crochet into the last stitch.
Okay, here we go. So we've done rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, do you see what's happening here? This is like this, and then the top is going like that. Have you ever run into an issue with the same brand of yarn, different colors, one skein is thicker than the other? Yes. Different colors of yarn because of the dyeing because of the dye and I have no idea how or why this works but different colors of the same brand of yarn will sometimes have a slightly different gauge you can change your hook size on one of the colors maybe the one with this that feels a little smaller go down a half a size of hook okay so see how my blankets going out like my edges are going out so this is why I don't like to end on row seven. Um, also, if you want to square off, I'm not sure that the square off works on the double crochet rows. So this is a problem with half double crochet because, or half snowflake effect, because these, these are your stripes, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and stop. But the blanket technically ends on row four. So, um, and I know a lot of people just go ahead and end on row seven and their blankets turn out fine and maybe their tension is different than mine and that that works out okay but I know that it would never work for me because look at that that is like <laughs> right I need another row of granny stitches to bring this back in like that okay I for my work need that so I'm going to change back to my edge color pretending I'm at the end of my blanket changing back to whatever this color was and I'm also going to use that as the first row of my edge and then I take my who asked me about changing colors? I take these two ends, my two tails, and I flip them up over my working yarn. This is my working yarn, and I pull it tight, hold it to the back. Well, I don't, I don't want to say pull it tight because I know how tight y'all will think I pulled it. It's not that tight. I'm just pulling it so that it's there's, it's not going to like make a hole or be loose or anything like that. And then I'm going to chain um, three or four because I'm going to do another row two. Okay. And then see, these guys are here. They're secure. They're not going anywhere. They're good for now. I mean, they're not good permanently, but they're good wh while I finish the blanket. Right. Okay, so it's row two, so I skip three. Three double crochet. Skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, three, three, three in the top. Going down the side, skip two, three double crochet. Skip two, D, C, three together, all three go into one stitch. Skip four, one, two, three, four, and work into the fifth. I know it feels like you're just like jumping over the biggest of spaces. Okay, 
And if you get a little bit of rippling there, it's okay. Every knitted or crochet item stretches with use and washing. So if you end up with a really rippled finished blanket, um, wash it and lay it flat and stretch it out a little bit. I know some people will work their blankets a little bit tighter so that they'll, you know, they won't, you know, they'll stretch out and have a, you know, they won't stretch too much, right? Skip two, going down the side. Two more. And the last stitch of the row, I'm going from back to front because of my curling problem. I'm doing an extended double crochet because of my curling. Okay. So that bring, brought my that brought my sides back in. Do you see how I personally needed those decreases to bring my swatch back in, bring my work, the sides of my work back in. Okay, so that's the purpose of doing this one again, to bring that splay back in to shape. Hi, Fran. Okay, and so if this is the top of my blanket, it's now I'm going to skip row three and I'm going to do row four, which is the single crochet row. This is in the baby blanket pattern, by the way. The six day baby blanket. Thank you. There, it's left over from the baby blanket. The nurturing fibers. Um, I used colors that were considered neutral. All, I mean, I know all colors are neutral, but these are like oranges and blues and this adventuring. This was my, this was my favorite, the adventuring. This isn't all of the colors in that blanket, but it's some of them. This adventuring turquoise and then that lighter blue. And then this is the sun kissed coral. I love peachy colors. Uh oh, I set my work down. <laughs> I lost track. I did that the other day on the live. I, I must have lost. I don't even know what happened. But I think I lost a stitch because the hook came out. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to talk. Okay. Nurturing Fibers Eco Cotton from Good Loops. They have kits for my baby blanket patterns. I've seen the um, uh, snowflake. Oh, of course. These these are all striping effects that um, blanketeers have come up with. Yeah, and then people say, "How do they do it?" And I had to figure it out, and so I could so that I could show other people. Um, I'm thinking bolder colors look better for the snowflake effect. Well, I've seen really beautiful snowflake effect blankets and some of them are just like really white, like light, really light, like baby blue, soft blue and white. I, I mean, 
I don't know. I haven't seen too many ugly six day kid blankets, honestly. I think the bold colors in the snowflake effect look great and, and really soft colors look great too. Okay, so now you can see that this top and bottom, this is a little bit bigger than this, but I don't, I mean, I think it would be less noticeable than continuing in this color. And what really would make it less noticeable is if you square it off, which I did here on this one. So I squared off. You can see it's a little bit wider here at the top than at the bottom. That might really bother some people, but I think it's a good it's a good solution to bringing the display in and then also having your color stripe match. Okay? This is what I wanted to show you before. Do you see what happened here? I did too many single crochet going up the side of this swatch. And part of the reason is because I chain extra stitches and then I you know I I have to account for that when I'm doing my edge. So when people say, well, how many should I put into, should I do two single crochet into each double crochet and one into each single crochet? That's gonna, that's gonna vary depending on your tension. So this is, this is a place, I mean, you all can see how that's going like this. I need it to, especially this corner is like, what is it doing? It's like totally crooked, right? Um, so this is where I should have laid it down and admired it a little bit more because I have too many, I have too many stitches here. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about doing the edge. So if this were my blanket, I'm going to do my edge in this same color. So that's going to make it look a little more even. And I'll just, I'll go down, um, one side so you all can see what I do. Let me zoom in. Okay, I work into the stitch. Let me see, where do I want to go? I go under two threads of the chain. Actually, let me see. Let me go back. Let me start over. Oh, I chained one. That's why that's not looking right. Okay. Okay, so this is this last stitch of my row four is going to be my corner. So I'm going to chain, I'm going to single crochet two more into there and make a corner. And I'm going to just keep going around. I prefer to go in a spiral than do a, um, a um, slip stitch and chain up. I need to go into this one right here to make a nice transition. Oh my goodness. My hands are so awkward right now. Of course I want to go into the tightest stitch in the universe. Okay. There's my turning chain. I'm treating it like a foundation chain. I'm going under two and I'm leaving one below. And it takes forever. Just like working into a chain. Everybody's favorite thing, right? Working into the chain. So here's my tail. I'm actually gonna work over that for one stitch. Oh my goodness, that is so loose. Let me fix that. And then here's my other tail. I'm going to take it this way and I'm going to work over it for one stitch. And it's not like knitting where there's a formula two into every three or anything like that. It just, it doesn't work out that way because some of us are chaining three. Some of us are only chaining, oh, I didn't catch it. Some of us are chaining four. Some of us are chaining three. So I can't really give you an exact do this many. You have to use your judgment. You have to make it straight. You know, you have to you have to keep 
laying it down and looking at it and checking it. Okay, I worked over that tail for two stitches. This is the hard part. Okay, and now I'm going to pull it out. And I'm not going to work over it anymore. And the reason I don't work over it um, is because it comes undone, number one. And also, you sometimes you can see it, and I don't want to see it. But do you see how working into the um, working into the stitch, how it gives me like this nice straight, um, this nice straight line and this little like outline. I, I love that part <laughs> on the on the underside. And um, I'll just show you what it would look like if I worked into the space. And I know lots of people work into the space, and that and that's fine. If you want to work into the space, you can. Okay, I did that one into the space. And now, okay. Okay, that's working into the stitch. It's working into the space. To me, this is more even. And I like that little blast of that little line of color underneath. You might not want it, but I like it. Okay, let me keep it awkward. This, this takes forever, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Some things, you know, we all love a good shortcut, but sometimes it's worth it to just take your time, do it right. Put a little extra time, effort, and attention on it and make it really, you know, get those details. Let's see. I work under two threads and I leave one on the bottom. Okay, and here I have where I've changed colors again. I'm going to work over them for like one stitch in each direction. There we go. You see that? I worked over that one going that way. And now this one, I'm going to work over it going the other way. I want to go under two threads, make sure I'm going under two and not one. like I only went under one. Whoops. Hang on, let me fix this. Yep, I only went under one. Come on, buddy. You can do it. There we go. Okay, and now I'm back at the beginning, so I would probably, I would probably do three, three stitches in this corner and then start working around the bottom or whatever I was going to be um, doing with my bottom. See, even, even this one that I was so carefully doing on a live and trying to do it right, even it goes like that a little bit. Well, I have these right there. That's where I worked into the space and the rest of it I worked into the stitches. So let me just end this. And then if I wanted to weave these guys in, now I could do that. Do I have a needle here? This is a really big needle for this yarn. It's too big. Um, but I'll do it anyways. I think the blankets take um, 9 or 12. 12 maybe? 12, um, 12 balls. I believe they, they, the, they, the price of them is about $60. The, um, the girl blanket 
might be a little bit more because we use the bamboo for that. Okay. So I have this whole matching edge where I can weave it in. And then you would want to, you want to change directions at some point. That one's really short. Let me try it on one of these brown ones. Okay. And this needle is too big to be doing. I need a smaller, um, I need a smaller needle. Okay, so I'm going to go under these. And then I'm going to go up into here. And then what I do is I follow a thread. Follow a thread up under these. See how um, my yarn changed directions? I don't know if you all can even see what I did. But I went down there, I went over, and then I changed directions. So changing directions is important. And now I'm going to clip it close. And you can't see anything. You have no idea where that yarn end started and stopped. There's no knot. There's no nothing. There's no evidence of it even having an end. That's that's what I, that's, you know, like just a little special attention to detail, in my opinion. There's no evidence of it. Let me do this one. I need a smaller needle. Okay, I'm going to go out under these single, and I usually weave in on the wrong side too. And if I had another, um, if I had another row of edge, I might go up into the edge with this end. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this row here. And down into this double crochet stitch. And down under these three stitches. I try not to split the yarn, but um, people say if you split the yarn, it stays in better. I think it was 12 of the nurturing fiber. Nurturing fibers. Okay, can't see it. It's totally invisible. Okay. Now it looks like like that because I only did one side. That is the half snowflake effect swatch with a little bit of pointers about how to match the top and bottom. I would square it off. I do not do Russian knot. I don't do knots. I avoid, I just want to put my hand over this corner. <laughs> Now that I've pointed it out to you all, it seems so, it seems so obvious. This is the baby boy one, but yeah, this is it with it squared off on the top. And it's, you can see where I did it, row two and then four and then squared off, right? And then work the edge in the same color. And it's, it's a little bit off, but... I think it's a good um, it's a good fix for um, for this particular um, this particular striping effect. I join I treat new joins like like I like the ends. Like if you um, if you were on the video earlier, I showed how I pull. I pull a new the new thread through the last two loops of the previous stitch before I run a change and then I take the two tails and I flip them over the working yarn and then I work I work my next 
you know, pull through of my next stitch, whether it's a chain or whatever it is. And that kind of locks those ends in place. And then I go back later and I weave it in and I'll take one end in one direction and one in the other direction. And I'll weave them out and then either up into another direction and you want to make sure you change directions that will keep it from coming out but I, I avoid tying knots no matter what I, I avoid uh, I avoid knots completely okay. across the board okay happy Friday everyone do y'all have any more questions so many people on the live tonight. This was so fun. Don't forget to, woo, that is really zoomed in. Don't forget that today is the last day to get your winter crochet pattern bundle with my two pocket shawls in it. You can go to my Facebook page and there's click the link there if you are gonna buy it yeah you're gonna weave your ends now awesome um, you know tr try to buy it through my affiliate link so that I get commission on the sale and that is one easy way that you can support me is by purchasing things through my affiliate links it doesn't cost you any extra money to use an affiliate link and I get a little bit of commission on the sale Jenny says, don't. What are you talking about? I remember reading anything about. Yeah. You're so welcome. I'll see you all in a couple of days. Maybe um, over the weekend I might go live and do. I'll do two more swatch alongs. I'll do the confetti effect and the popsicle effect for you. And um, that way you'll have plenty of time to still swatch those two striping methods and make some decisions about your blanket for the challenge if you're starting a new one. All right, thank you so much. And if you're watching me on YouTube or wherever you're watching me, make sure you subscribe or like my page and click the bell for notifications so you know whenever I'm going live. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful Friday.